Yes, Pastor Charles Osazua is my name. This is a new program that is coming on air. It's a new product. I want you to call your family members, call your friends to hook on to this station right now. I've been born again for some time. I've met God for some time. And I have a burden in my heart. I know that it's not the will of God for Christians to be poor. It's not the will of God for Christians not to rise in their career. The will of God for us is to be top in our calling, top in our career, top in all fields of human endeavor. This is the promise of scripture. And as I go around the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, I discover that these prophecies are not being fulfilled. These prophecies are not being fulfilled because the Bible says, and the word become flesh. These prophecies have not become flesh. Everywhere I go, I see holy Christians, committed Christians, dedicated believers, but yet they are not fulfilling their calling. And I went on to do a research. And as I did a research, why are things happening the way they are happening? And God gave me certain insight that will help believers, certain insight that will help Christians. This is not just a message. This is is a program that I believe God will change the body of Christ and affect, effect, and influence my hearers to take decisions to succeed. I'm looking out for people that will own their own aviation industry, manufacturers, thinkers. I'm looking out for people who will have expatriates work in their firms. I'm looking out for Christians that will take over the oil and gas, take over real estate, take over fields dominated by unbelievers. So the program you are watching now is called Strategy. This program is called Strategy. My topic today, why are believers poor? Why are believers poor? In spite of God's promise of blessing, why are Christians poor? I go to church, I'm full of the Holy Ghost, I speak in tongues, I'm not living in sin. Why am I poor? Who is responsible for my poverty? Why am I where I am? I believe God strongly. By the time I'm true, with this insight God has given to me, I believe God that you will rise to take responsibility. And I will see you at the top. I will see you at the place where God originally has destined for you. He said to Jeremiah, while you were still in your mother's womb, I have ordained you a prophet. Now, we are going to look at a few scriptures. We are going to look at some things. I want you to be very patient with me because for me, this is a lifetime encounter. Some of the things I'm about to share with you are the things that shaped my life personally. Are the things that I have help me to do the little things I'm able to do. And I have a leading in my heart to share them with you. Take your pen, take your diary, and write down a few things that will come your way. I believe it will change you. I am certain. If it changed me, it will change you. Let us look at the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandment, which I have commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. Listen to this. The mind of God for every believer, irrespective of denomination, is to be high above all nations. So if you are not fulfilling these prophecies, we are going to find out why. If God's agenda for the church, God's program for the church is to be high above all nations. The only the purpose of this program, if this is what God is saying, why are we not fulfilling it? Look at the next one here. And he said, above all nations. Above all nations. He said, you shall be the head 
and not the tail. Can I ask you a question? Are you really the head in your organization? Are you really the head where you live? Is this mere prophecies or reality in your life? The purpose of strategy on television is to convert prophecies, to become tangible, physical, touchable, practical reality in your life. It's no longer I pray. I see people uh, prophesy, you shall be great. I receive, I claim, I receive, I claim. You have received, you have claimed. Did it happen? That is what we are about to reveal. Look at another scripture, Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 21. Out of Zion shall comfort saviors. God's heart is bleeding because we are not taking our covenant position on earth. He said, out of Zion shall comfort savior. What kind of savior? Financial savior. Media savior. Internet savior. Um, real estate savior. Oil and gas savior. Saviors in all field of human endeavor. Ah, I've made up my mind to be a savior in my field. I've made up my mind to be a savior in my field. And I want you also to do the same. He said, out of Zion shall come forth Savior. In 3 John chapter 3 verse 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. If you read Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, Micah chapter uh, 4 from verse 1 to 4, the Bible repeated verbatim. And what is it? He said, it shall come to pass on the last days, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow into the house of the Lord. Not because we pray. Not because we speak in tongues, but because we have certain results. What will make all nations flow into the church is not another all night. It's not another prayer. It's not fasting. It's result that cannot be denied. I feel in my spirit that somebody is watching me on television. You are about to enter a realm of result that even your adversary cannot deny your result. That is where you are getting into. He repeated, he said, an all nation. He said, the people will say to us, come and show us your God. Can I tell you this? By prophecy, you are designed to be heard. By prophecy, you are designed to be a nation higher than other nation. The striking one is Zechariah chapter 8. He said, they shall hold the skirt of him that is a Jew. They shall hold the skirt of him that is a believer. They shall say, come, show us your God. We have seen that God is with you. Now, this is all that pastors have taught us. This is all that preachers have taught us. They have told us about the prophecy. But the question is, how do we get there? Just hang on a minute. As we go on this very short break, I will be back to continue from where I started. God bless you. Welcome back from that short break. As we continue on this search for knowledge and wisdom. Everything I shared before we went on break are things you are familiar with. You are head and not the tail. Amen. Ten men will hold your skirt and say, show me your God. Amen. You are going to be above all nations of the earth. Amen. Look at this golden scripture. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. This will shock you. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knew not how to go to the city. The successful man is laboring. The unsuccessful man is laboring. But there are not two kinds of labor. The labor of one is foolish. The labor of the other one is smart. What is the difference? This other unsuccessful man, he know not how to go to the city. Every prophecy of scripture is correct. But the question is, believers don't know how to go to the city. That's what the problem is. Now, there are familiar scriptures we are familiar with. We quote them almost all the time in the church. Now, what are the scriptures? For my people are gone into captivity because they lack knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, we are familiar. Now, John chapter 8 verse 32, for my people, for you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you. We are familiar. 
But there's something I want to show you in scripture. The difference between the very rich and the very poor. The very successful and the unsuccessful. I want to show you something in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 2. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 2, the first time I ran into the scripture, I screamed. I shouted. I said, God, is this in the Bible? Look at this. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. But a fool's heart is at his left. I'm getting into my teaching already. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching me in different parts of the world. In Africa, in America, in Nigeria. Success is not a native of any country. Principles are stronger than principalities. Success has no regard whether you are black or white, your color, your gender. It has nothing to do with who you are. But just listen to this truth. They are coming heavily. Some of these teachings, I will be coming daily to share them with you. Please tell your neighbors, your friends, that there is a new program on television called Strategy. I know that God did not lie, but you need strategy. You need strategy to convert prophecies to physical, tangible, practical realities. That's why I'm on television, to share with you some of the truths that have shaped my life as a believer. Now, what is the position of your heart? Is it on the left-hand side or on the right? As I go deeper, you will find out whose heart is on the right or whose heart is on the left. Little wonder in the book of Proverbs, I think chapter 4 and verse 23, it said, guide your heart, protect it. Another translation says, engage guards to guide your heart. Because out of your heart are the issues of life. What? Out of your heart are the issues of life. He said, guide your heart, protect your heart, because from your heart comes the issues of what? Of life. This is very critical. As a man thinketh in his heart, that is how the man is. As a man thinketh in his heart, that is how the man is. Your thought is your person. Unfortunately, this is what Christians are doing. Oh God, prosper me. Every dream of my way, clear. Every man in my father's house, in my village, holding me, I clear. I die, fall, collapse. Now, can I tell you something? Ignorance is not a demon. <laughs> so you can't cast it out. You can spend all your life praying this prayer and remain poorer. Now, what you need to do is to end your foolish labor by finding out how to go to the city. A man who knows how to go to the city does not struggle. When you have the key of your car, you open it laughing. When you have the key of your door, you open it smiling. You don't struggle. You only struggle when you have your car key trying to use it to open your door. You have the key, but it's for the wrong purpose. Many of us have expired keys in our hands. Some keys that are not relevant. Some keys that are not scripturally current. This book is all-time book. The oldest book with latest truth. The oldest book with current facts. The scripture says they are new every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, ignorance is not a demon, so you can't cast it out. You need to know, how do I go to the city? This is very critical. He said, a wise man's heart is at his right. A foolish man's heart is at his left. Let me say this very briefly. Peter said in Acts 10, verse 34, he said, now I know. That God is not a respecter of persons. God has no preference for white or black. Do you know today in America, the best doctors are Nigerians. The best scientists are Nigerians. Nigerians have excelled in different fields. Africans, 
They are doing well. First class, Harvard, first class, Oxford. They are all black people. So don't allow your background to put you on the ground. Now, let me analyze to you the common mistakes that Christians make. The first mistake I see Christians make, praying for success, fasting for success, sowing seed for success. Are they good? Very perfect, but they are not complete package. The challenge, praying for success, sowing seed for success, pay, uh, doing all manner of things to succeed, I receive. They are truth. God's word cannot lie, but they are not complete package. If you end up praying, fasting, sowing seed for success, you are like a generator that is not on. There is diesel, there is everything, but you are not on. And because you are not on, you cannot produce light. You are like a car that is parked, that is not on. So what I have come to do with strategy is to convert some of these things and on you so that you can generate light. And when you generate the light I'm talking about, that is success. Now we are going to look at very briefly here, notable difference between the successful people, the great people, and the very poor. Take care of the take note of this. In my little years of work with God, I have discovered that Satan is not powerful. The only thing that is making him excel is the powerful ignorance in the body of Christ. Powerful ignorance in the body of Christ. You know, we you may not believe what I want to tell you, but religion in Africa has hampered development. Religion in Africa has has affected us negatively because we have left our responsibility to God. If you read Psalm 119 verse 109, he said, my soul is in my hand, not in God's hand. God has finished everything that he needs to finish. What you do is to discover so that you can recover. Go and check. Every man that you have seen today that is at the top who have done great things is a product of research. Now, the first notable thing I have seen between the very rich and the very poor, watch this. If you meet any very successful people, ask them. It begins with hunger, thirst, and restlessness. The hunger and the restlessness to succeed is one character feature with all the great people you admire. Is it Archbishop Bessini Dahusa? Is it Bishop David Ujiripo? Is it Pastor uh, Adebuye? Is it my humble self? From the age of 14, I was dreaming to become the richest man on earth at 27. Don't ask me whether it came to pass. It was a hunger. The question I'm asking you, what is your drive? What is driving you? Go, go and check. In primary school, in secondary school, in university, have you not noticed there are some exceptional friends you have? They talk in certain way. They behave in certain way. They, it looks like a joke, but they tell you one day I will be the president. One day I will be the governor. Don't ask me if those dreams have come to pass, but that is the foundation. The foundation of greatness is unquenchable hunger unquenchable desire to succeed. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, he said, those that are tasty for righteousness, I will fill them. Isaiah said, as many of you that are hungry and are tasty, he said, come and buy with that money. Now, the problem you have, you think you need capital. No, no, capital is far, far behind. We have not got into, got into capital at all. The first law of success is restlessness. You know, Jacob told, I mean, Isaac told Esau. He said, Father, don't you have another blessing? Have you exhausted everything? You know what he told him? He said, your brother, I've taken it. I have blessed Jacob and he's blessed. But however, if you become restless, you will break this yoke off your neck. There is nothing your brother have that you will not have. That's why when both of them met, Isaac, I mean, Jacob was trying to, but you say, I have this. He said, relax, I have two. 
Why? Restlessness is what gives birth to unquenchable hunger to succeed. Now, let me tell you how poor people think. Poor people will tell you, praise God. Poor people will say, life is destiny. <laughs> some are destined to be rich. Some are destined to be poor. We just have to take it one step at a time. Let's just do little we can and leave the rest to God. That sounds okay. That sounds good. He said, all of us are not destined to be at the top. That's how, when you see people talking like this, you already know where they will end. Because the Bible says, the poor will never cease from the earth. But I remove my name. You see the way poor people think? They have a way of bringing emotion into life. They have a way of making you pity them. Everybody cannot be rich. Everybody cannot be successful. Me, I just want to take it one step at a time. God's will is the best. God's time is the best. You know, um, some are destined to be rich. Some are destined to be poor. You know, but successful people don't think like that. Successful people have creative minds. They are restless. They are never satisfied with where they are. My prayer for you today, the restlessness that is the foundation of success come upon you. And I believe God that haven't listened to me, you will take certain strategic step that will give you success you have never gotten before. Now, after being restless, what is the second stage? Hunger and search for information. <laughs> Did you understand this? Now you are restless. Being restless alone does not make you succeed. Being restless alone doesn't give you the success you desire. Now, hunger and restlessness alone is not enough. Now, what is the second stage? The second stage is search for information. Let me read this scripture. It will bless your life. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. Anybody you see conquering in any area has discovered something. Look at this scripture. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings to search it out. Can I tell you something? Success has no regard for religion. Whether you are Christian or Muslim, pagan, Hindu, because the gospel of Jesus Christ is both his person and his principles. His person guarantees you make heaven, but his principles take care of the earth. Unfortunately, most of the economic books you see today are all full of the principles of Christ. You don't need to be a believer to enjoy rainfall on your roof. You don't be a, need to be a believer to enjoy the sun, the moon, the, the, the weather, the climate. You don't need to be a believer. So that is how success is. There are people that may never go to heaven, but they have mastered the economic principles of Jesus. So why you go to heaven, they have mastered the principles of Christ. And they are making a whole lot of success. The first stage is hunger. I mean, the first stage is restlessness. Now, restlessness leads you to search. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29. Look at this. In Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29. Look at what the scripture says very clearly. Because I like taking you to the scripture. Because what I'm teaching you is not motivation. You know, somebody will say, ah, is it motivation? No, I'm teaching you truth. Things don't change with time. They change with truth. <laughs> so, I'm not motivating you. I'm only showing you the picture of your future in the scripture. That's what I'm showing you. <laughs> Praise God. The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed, those things which are searched out. Hey, you are an internet expert. Search out. There is something that is still coded in that area. You are a media expert. Search out. Don't, we don't need another CNN. We don't need another Jazeera. We don't need another AIT. We don't need another channel. There is still an area in media that has not been uncovered. In the manufacturing, there is still coded area. You need to search it out. In the ministry, discover, there are still discoverable areas in all human endeavor. Are you hearing me? We don't need another Kenneth Copeland. We don't need another or a robot. There are still areas in God that no man has touched. He said, it's the glory of kings to search it out. Ladies and gentlemen, God made you original. Don't die photocopy. Search out your area. You have an area. The earnest expectation of the world. They are waiting for manifestation of sons. 
God, the word is waiting for us. In politics, the word is waiting for us. We need born again Christian governors. We need born again Christian presidents that will change events in this country. 